Now moving on to the series of these arithmetic and geometric sequences, with the arithmetic sequence, or the arithmetic series I should say, there's a nice way of adding these numbers together. So we will look at how we add these numbers together. So there's a story that goes this very famous and influential mathematician, Carl Friedrich Gauss, who lived a long time ago, was some Swiss guy. And he, as a schoolboy, the story goes, the teacher gave them a assignment of adding up the numbers one through 100. And he was done much faster than all the other students. And the teacher was just amazed about how he did it. And so he did not just go through brute force and do one plus two plus three plus four and so on. He found a nice quick way of adding the numbers one through 100 by finding nice pairings or matchings of the sequence that made everything a little bit nicer. So here, what we have written is just a fancy way of saying add the numbers 1 through 100 because our general formula is just i. So this is saying the first term plug in 1 for i, the next term plug in 2 for i. So you have 1 plus 2 plus 3. So these are the different i values. This is i is 1, i is 2, so on. And we're not going to write out all 100 numbers. We're going to skip a few and have plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. And so what Gauss figured out is that if you take the sequence of numbers or take the series and you flip it backwards and add it to itself, something really nice happens. So we're going to take the sequence 1 through 100. We're going to flip it backwards. So we're going to start with 100 and then count down 99 plus 98 plus skip a few plus now at the end here we're getting to 3 plus 2 plus 1 so we're taking the sequence and flipping it backwards and then we're adding the sequence going forwards to the sequence going backwards and we can see what happens if you do 1 plus 100 you get 101 if you do 2 plus 99 you get 101 if you do 3 plus 98, you get 101. So skip a few. And just for good measure, checking these, it's the same sums. 98 plus 3 is 101. 99 plus 2 is 101. And lastly, you get 101. So the question is, how many times do we have 101 here? And we want to figure that out because what we're doing and the reason why this is nice is because if you have the same number added to itself however many times, that can be translated, instead of adding that number a bunch of times, it can be translated into multiplication, which is much quicker to do than adding up all these numbers. So we have, if you count how many numbers we have, well, there's one, two, three, there's 100 pairs if you keep counting all the way up. So we have 100 of these 100 ones. So we have 100 of these, which means that this is equal to 100 times 101. So we're multiplying 100 with 101. However, if you think about what we wanted, we initially wanted just the numbers 1 through 100 added together. But we took the numbers 1 through 100 and we added it to itself. So that means we have twice as many numbers, or our sum is twice as big as we need it to be. So we can say, but. This is twice as big, so we divide by 2. So we want to divide 100 times 101 by 2. So what we have here is that the sum of the numbers 1 through 100 is 100 times 101 divided by 2. And when you put that in the calculator, you end up getting that this is 5,050. So the numbers 1 through 100 added up is 5,050. And you can get that from quickly doing this calculation, 100 times 101 divided by 2. And that comes from pairing up the numbers so that they all add to the same thing. And we can always do this with an arithmetic sequence. And so let's see with a sequence that is not as clean as just 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on, and see if it works for another sequence. So like I said, this works as long as we have an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic series, I should say, because we're adding the numbers up. 
And so working with this one, doing, we're doing the sum from i equals one. So saying i is the variable and we're starting at position one and we're going to position 10. So we'll have 10 terms. And this is the formula that we have here. And we can simplify this formula a little bit, distribute this seven in. And so this gives us 10 plus seven i minus seven. Combine like terms and we end up getting 10 minus seven is three. So this is three plus seven i. A little bit easier to do the calculations with. And so the sequence what we have is we're starting with when i is one, plug in one into, it doesn't matter either of these, but the second one is a little bit easier to work with. Plug in one into that. And so this is three plus seven times one, which is 10. And the next term, plug in two into that, that's three plus 14, which is 17. And so this is when i is two. And then we'll do one more. So you are essentially just adding seven each time. So this is 24. Uh, skip a few so we don't have to write out the entire sequence. And we end up getting 59 towards the end here, 66. We just keep adding seven and then we end with 73. And so now what we do to get the sum, so if we're doing the sum from i equals one to 10 of 10 plus i minus one times seven, this is equal to, we're just adding up all the numbers together. So we're doing 10 plus 17 plus 24 plus skip a few plus 59 plus 66 plus 73. And so we take the sequence and we flip it and add it to itself backwards. So now we're going to write the sequence backwards. So we start with plus 73 plus 66 plus 59 plus skip a few. Now we're on the lower end. So we are winding down to 24 plus 17 plus 10. And so here we can see the pairings. We have 10 plus 73. That one's nice to add. That's just 83 plus 17 plus 66 is 83. And for good measure, if you do 24 plus 59, that is also 83. Plus skip a few and we have the same pairings here, it's just on flipped ends. So this is 83 plus 83 plus 83. Now you might ask yourself, how many 83s do we have? There are 10 83s. So there's 10 of these. So we have that this sum is equal to 10 times 83, because we're adding 83 10 times, but it's twice as big as what we want. So we have that this sum here, and I'll write it all out, the sum i is equal to one to 10 of 10 plus i minus one times seven is equal to, we're doing 10 times 83 over two, because we have to divide the sum there or that multiplication, 10 times 83 divided by two, it's twice a big. And so we get, if we do this multiplication out here, we get that this comes out to 415. And so to fill in some of these parts here that we skipped up top, this series that or this notation here, this asks us to add the first 10 terms generated by 10 plus i minus one times seven. So just to fill in, have that complete, completed there. And so the sum or the series here of the first 10 terms is 415. And so when we are creating a formula, because that's what we're going to do, create a formula for this arithmetic sum, we want to identify what parts are staying the same and what parts are changing, and then try to come up with where are those changing parts coming from. So looking at these two formulas or these two expressions that we wrote, the 100 times 101 divided by two and the 10 times 83 divided by two, well, we have they're both divided by two. So we can say for sure that if we're looking at the nth partial sum of any arithmetic series, which is essentially the sum of an arithmetic sequence, we have in the denominator two. That's, that's for sure. We're dividing by two no matter what. And then this 10 and the 100, comparing what those numbers are coming from, the 10 and the 100 are the number of terms that we have. 
So we call that, if we're doing the sum of n terms, because we're doing the nth partial sum, so s sub n, we're multiplying that number out front is n. And then the 83 and the 101 are coming from, it's the sum of all the pairs. So the sum of, I should say, each of the pairs is on the first one, 101. On the second one, it's 83. So we could really say it is a sub one plus a sub n. Or we could, if we want to, a sub two plus a sub n minus one. But just to keep everything like nice and consistent, we can just say it's the first term plus the last term. So a sub one plus a sub n. And this is a formula to get the nth partial sum of any arithmetic series, which is a very powerful tool or a very powerful formula because that means we can add any arithmetic sequence or figure out the sum of any arithmetic sequence or the nth partial sum and just get out a nice clean number using this formula. So let's practice this a little bit. With each of these parts here, some of them we might have to do some digging to figure out some of the different values. But we have, so we want to do the sum. So to do the sum, we have the different parts here. So we have n is the number of terms. So we have n is equal to 20. We have what the formula is, but we don't have a sub one and we don't have a sub n. So we want, a sub one and a sub n. So that's what you want to figure out. So to find those, we just plug in one, and in this case, n, which is that n is 20. So we're plugging in one for n or one for i, and we're plugging in 20 for n or 20 for i, we're just changing the variable names. And so to find a sub one, you just do, three times one plus one, this is equal to four. So we have a sub one is four. And then to get a sub n, we have a sub 20, cause that's what the n is, or that's what the i is. That's the last term. You can see that in the top there of the sigma is equal to, we just plug in 20 for i. So this is three times 20 plus one. And then this gives us that a sub 20 is, 61. So we have each of the parts that we need now, because we need n, we need a sub 1, and we need a sub n. So to figure out s sub 20, and I guess we could put that in the part that we want, we want s sub 20, the 20th partial sum here. So if we do s sub 20, so we have that general formula there for the nth partial sum is s sub n is equal to n times a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2. And now we have each of those parts. So s sub 20 is what we're looking for is equal to 20. That's the n times a sub 1. We found it before. Plus a sub n or a sub 20 is 61. And this is all divided by 2. Punch this in the calculator and we get s sub 20 is equal to 650. And so on the next one, remember what we we want to find the sum here. So what we have, let's write out. So we have the first term, we have a sub one is five. And we actually have the last term, that's what we need, a sub n is 348. But what we don't have is we don't have the n. So we need, we need the n. In order to get the n, we sort of have to figure out what the general formula is here. So we have to write out or find what the general formula is in order to find what this n value is. So we need n. In order to get the n, we need the general formula. So we need to get a sub n is equal to a sub 1. And this is adding, so this is arithmetic. We need to get a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. And so working with that, we actually have, we can see what the D is. We're adding seven each time. So we have D is seven. And also what we need or what we're trying to find is S sub N. We're trying to find that sum. So let's plug in these different values to find N. 
So to find n, we plug in the different values that we have. So a sub n, the final term is 348, is equal to a sub 1, which is 5, plus d, which is 7, times n minus 1. That's what we're trying to find is n minus 1. So what we can do is we can now just do algebra to solve for n. So we have 5 out here, so we can subtract 5 on both sides. And we have 348 minus 5 is 343. This is equal to 7 times n minus 1. Divide by 7 to get n minus 1 by itself. And we have 343 divided by 7 is 49. So this is 49 is equal to n minus 1. And then to get n, we add 1 on both sides. So that adds to 0 on the right. And on the left, we have this is 50 is equal to n. So here we have the n now. And that's what we needed when we are trying to use this formula. We need the n, we need the a sub 1, and we need the a sub n. So now we find s sub, and we can say this is s sub 50 now. So now to find s sub 50, we just use what we found and all the other parts that we have. So s sub 50 is equal to n, which is 50, times a sub 1, which we found to be 5, plus a sub n, which we found to be 348, all divided by 2. Throw this into the calculator, and you get s sub 50 is equal to 8,820. Now the next one here, we have that the number of theater seats in an auditorium with 50 rows where the first row has 20 seats and each successive row has two more seats than the previous. So let's write out what we have. So we have the auditorium with 50 rows. So the sequence here, the thing that is the term values are the number of seats in each row and the n is the number of rows. So n is 50 here, that's the first part, the number of rows is 50 rows, and we have the first row has 20 seats, so a sub one is 20, and with each successive row has two more seats than the previous, so that's telling us d is two. So what we need, well first off we're trying to see how many total seats are in here? Because we're trying to find the number of theater seats in an auditorium. So we're trying to find the number of seats in an auditorium. So we need to find what is S sub 50. But in order to use the formula, we need to figure out what is A sub 50. So we need A sub 50. So to find A sub 50, we're going to use that general formula. A sub N is equal to a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. We're going to use that to find a sub 50. So to find a sub 50, let's carry this down on the we have part. So we have a sub 50 is equal to a sub 1, which is 20, plus d, which is 2, times n, which is 50, minus 1. Throw this all on the calculator and we have a sub 50 is equal to 118 seats. So now we have all the pieces that we need. We have the n, we have the a sub 1, we have the a sub n, or the a sub 50. So now to find s sub 50 again, we're doing s sub 50, and we're using that arithmetic formula. So this is equal to, in the numerator, we have 50 times a sub 1, which is 20, plus a sub n, which is 118, all divided by 2. And so this gives us s sub 50 is equal to 3,450. So these different parts here, we're given or we have different pieces of the puzzle, and we need to work through and figure out what do we need. We're trying to find the sum. So look at the pieces of the sum formula, the n, the a sub 1, the a sub n, and we have to work through and figure out what each of those different values are. So this situation is that we're working out and we decide to start with 20 sit-ups on the first day and then add two sit-ups each day. And so after 30 days, you want to figure out how many total sit-ups we have done. So the total sit-ups, that means we're finding 
the S sub M. We're finding the total number of sit-ups. We're adding the values of the sequence together. So let's write out what we have. We have here, we decided to do 20 sit-ups on the first day. So that's A sub 1 is 20. We have that we're doing two more each day. So that's the difference. D is 2. And then we're looking at 30 days. So after 30 days, that is N is 30. So these are the parts that we have. So we need, or the parts that we want. First off, we're trying to find S sub N, or I guess S sub 30, which is 30 times A sub 1 plus A sub N over 2. So what we need is we have the A sub 1 part. We just need the A sub N again. So to find A sub N, I guess we can list that as what we need to find the A sub N, we use the general formula. So to get the general formula, so to find this, let's put this over in the we have category. We're going to get a sub n, or I guess this is a sub 30. So to get a sub 30, we have a sub 30 is equal to, remember we're using the general form for arithmetic sequence, which is a sub n is equal to a sub one plus d times n minus one. So we're plugging all these values in. So we have a sub one is 20 plus d, which is two times n, which is 30 minus one, and this gives us a sub 30 is equal to throw this in the calculator and we get 78. So we have all the pieces that we need. Once again, now we can find S sub 30, the sum or the series of the 30 terms. And so we have S sub 30 is equal to 30 times A sub 1, which is 20, plus a sub n, which is 78, over 2. And th throw this in the calculator, and we get that we have 1,470 sit-ups. And so if we wanted to add a geometric series, it's not quite as straightforward as the arithmetic one where we can just pair the things nicely together because it doesn't work out where we get the same sum each time. But if we're working with the geometric series right here, this is asking us to sum or to add the first five terms generated by the two times three to the i. So this sequence looks like if we write this out, there's only five terms, so it won't take too long. Uh, when i is one, we plug in one for i, so this is two times three to the i, which is six. And then the next one is i is equal to 2. So we plug in 2. That's 2 times 3 squared, which is 2 times 9. So that is 18. The next one, we're essentially just multiplying by 3 each time. So this is 54. So again, we're multiplying by 3. Multiplying by 3. So just keep multiplying by 3. And you end up with the next one is 162. The next one is 486. And so we're just multiplying by 3 each time. And I have the work written out, sort of the proof of how to get the formula here. It's a little bit of clever rearranging. You essentially just multiply the entire sequence by R. And you move some stuff around. And then you solve for S sub N. And you end up getting this expression here. Which the A is essentially like the A sub 1. So really when we write A here, this should be A sub 1 on each of these. And so this formula here is a sub one. So the general formula for the nth partial sum of a geometric series is given here, where s sub n, so the nth partial sum is a sub one times one minus r to the n divided by one minus r. So here, this one's nice because we don't need to find what the final term of the series is. Unlike with the arithmetic series, we needed to find what that final term was. Here, all we need is a sub 1, and we need the multiplier r. So in this example here, if we wanted to actually work out the formula with the 2 times 3 to the i, when i is 1, so the very initial or first term, a sub 1, this is 6. And we can see that when we plug in 1 for i, we get 6. It's 2 times 3 to the one. And notice that this is written in a slightly different form than our general form 
has been written. Normally, we write our general form as a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. But notice here that this is times 3 to the i. So rather than to the i minus 1, it's to the i. And that's okay. That just is another way of writing it. One way is not right or wrong. This is just how we are going to write it because the way we write it with this, we can easily identify what is the first term and what is the base multiplier. But the base multiplier here, that's the r. That's going to be 3 here. That's, that's what the base of the exponent is. And so to be able to find what is the fifth partial sum or s sub 5, you plug in 5 here. And so you have, so a sub 1 is 6 times 1 minus 3, that's r, to the n, which is 5, all divided by 1 minus r, which is 3. Now you might be worried here because you see a negative number when you do 1 minus 3, you're going to get negative 2. But let's actually see what happens. So when we work this out, this is 6 times, if you do 1 minus 3 to the fifth power in the calculator, you end up getting this is negative 242. Because this, ne this negative 3 to the fifth power is going to be much bigger than the positive 1. So that's going to be negative in there. And then you do 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So it works out nicely where you have a negative in the numerator, negative in the denominator, it becomes positive. So at the end of the day, we end up getting 726 is the sum here. So we can work through some examples here where we have the following sums. So again, all we need to get the sums is a sub one and r. So the initial term and the ratio or that multiplier. So we have, we have what the multiplier is. We have that is five. So r is five. And technically we can get what the initial term is the a sub 1. This is equal to, if we plug in 1 into the n, so this is 0 0.4 times 5 to the 1. If you do that, you get a sub 1 is 2. And that's all we need. So to find the s sub n, or in this case, s sub 6, we just plug in those values that we have. So to get s sub 6, the 6 partial sum, adding the 6 terms together, we have in the numerator a sub 1, which we found to be 2, times 1 minus r, which is 5, to the power of n is 6. We probably should have wrote that in the we have part, n is 6, divided by, in the denominator here, this is 1 minus r, so 1 minus r. And we end up getting, we plug this into the calculator, that s sub 6 is equal to 7,812. And then the next one here, again, this is sort of similar to the ones that we had before. We have all the terms listed out. So we want to write out what we have. So we have, and think about what we need as well. Thing about what we need is we need when we're working with s sub n, we're trying to find that. So we're trying to find s sub n, which is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. So from these different pieces, we want to see, do we have the n? Do we have the a sub 1? Do we have the r? So looking at each of these, a sub 1, that's kind of given to us. That's the first term here. That's the 1. So a sub 1 is 1. We have the r we can figure out is just multiplying by 4 each time. So this is just times 4, times 4. Each time we're just multiplying by 4. So the r is 4. And then next, we want to see, do we have the n? Well, we don't have the n right off the bat. We need to find the n. So we need the n. So to find the n, we're going to use the general formula for the exponential or geometric sequence. So we're going to find n here. So to find n, remember we're using a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So let's plug in all the values that we have. So we have a sub n, which is the final term of the sequence. This is the a sub n. So I guess we could write that in the we have part. We have a sub n is equal to 4,096. So plug that in. We have 4,000. 
96 is equal to a sub 1, which is 1, times r, which is 4, to the power of n minus 1. And now you might be thinking here, wait, we have a variable in the exponent. Well, we can use our log rules or our methods of solving log equations. So let's rewrite this. This is 1 times 40 dn. That's really just 40 dn. The 1 out front doesn't really do anything. If this wasn't a 1, we would have to divide that leading coefficient out, but we don't have to do that here. We can just kind of absorb that 1 into the 4 to the n. And now we have different methods. We can apply using inverses. We can apply log base 4 on both sides. We can apply the natural log on both sides. I like to roll the log, so let's roll the log here. So we have 4 is the base, so that will stay the base. So on the right-hand side here, we have log base 4 of, and then the n minus 1 and the 4096 swap place. So 4096 is the input of the log. And then on the other side of the equation is n minus 1. So we have n minus 1 is equal to this log, which this log is just a number we can put in the calculator. And what we do is we, to get n by itself, add 1 on both sides. But then we also use the change of base because in order to put this in the calculator, we need the base to change. So we need to write this as log of 4096 over log of 4. And then this is plus 1. And this is something we can put in the calculator. So let's see that in Desmos. In Desmos, we have in the function tab, we're going to log of 4096, close the parenthesis, divided by function log of 4, close the parenthesis, Oh, that comes out nicely to 6, which I sure hope so, because we're finding n, and n is a position number. And so we would hope that with what we talked about before, the n can only be counting numbers. So that's good. And then we add 1 to the n there. So we have n is 7. So we have n is 7 after a bit of work by plugging in all the values that we have into the general formula. And so now we can find s sub 7 by using that 7 that we found and using the other values. So remember, we're using s sub 7 is equal to, we have the general formula for the series written up here, a sub 1, which is 1, times 1 minus r, which is 4 to the power of 7, because that's n, divided by 1 minus 4. Throw all this into the calculator, and we get s sub 7 is equal to 5,461. And on the next one here, we're trying to find the sum. We're trying to find the total of a bacteria culture that starts with one individual and grows by a fact factor of six per hour. So we want to see how many bacteria there are after 10 hours. So let's write out what we have. And keeping in mind what we need or what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find S sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So we need the a sub 1, the initial term, we need the multiplier r, and we need the n, the number of terms. So we have here a sub 1, that's the starting amount of bacteria, and that's actually 1. That gives us right here, it starts with one individual, and we have, let's see, do we have the multiplier r? Yeah, it grows by a factor of 6 per hour, so that's the r is 6. And then the n, in this case, we're counting by hours, that's time. So n is the number of hours, which is 10. So we have everything we need. Now we want to find s sub 10 is what we're finding. And so to do this, we use our formula that we have written above. So we're doing s sub 10 is equal to a sub 1, which is 1, times 1 minus r, which is 6, to the power of 10, divided by 1 minus r, which is 6. Throw this all into the calculator and you get s sub 10 is equal to a very big number, 12,093,235 bacteria.